and the University of Pennsylvania Quakers. Let's meet the starting lineups. First, for LaSalle. At a forward position, a junior, six feet, six inches tall, from Philadelphia, number 22, Lionel Simmons. At the other forward, a senior, six feet, six inches tall, from Glenside, Pennsylvania, number 42, Craig Conlin. At the center spot, a freshman, six feet, Nine inches tall from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, number 44, Loco Weavers. At the guards, the sophomores, six feet, two inches tall from Philadelphia, number 11, Doug Overton. At the other guard, the freshman, six feet, six inches tall from Linnitz, Pennsylvania, number 25, Jack Bird. The head coach. Sally University Explorers in his third season is Bill Speedy Morris. And for the University of Pennsylvania Quakers. At a forward position, a junior, six feet, five inches tall, from Los Angeles, California, number 23, Jerry Simon. The other forward is sophomore, six feet, seven inches tall, from Covington, Kentucky, number 32, Sean Denise. At the center spot, a sophomore, six feet, seven inches tall, from Brooklyn, New York, number 42, Hassan Coco. At the guard, to junior, six feet, two inches tall, from Canyon, New Jersey, number 10, Tyrone Gilliam. There is the man in the middle, Mr. Pavi, along with Higgins and Jerry Donahue. Again, reviewing for you, LaSalle three and one, losing their opener in the Big Apple NIT at Syracuse, 92 to 76. Then they won a tournament down at Austin P, the Acme Boot Classic in Clarksville. Lionel Simmons, the tournament MVP, beating Georgia Southern by two and beating Austin P, and then beating St. Joe in their opening Big Five game, 81 to 57. Pennsylvania 2-1, but they could very easily be 3-0 as they dropped their opener at Navy in double overtime by two. They have since beaten Delaware 80-63, and of course the unforgettable victory over the Villanova Wildcats. As they did against Villanova the other night, they did a good job on the glass against Villanova. If they're going to stay with the LaSalle Explorers tonight, they're going to still have to do that good job on the glass. And our stat of the night will be keeping track of backcourt scoring as Lionel Simmons and Hassan Duncan. Jump it up, and Doug Overton controls for the Explorers, and here they come. Quickly into the lane is Conlon. Got it. Well, man-to-man -man early by Penn, first possession, and Conlon just went right to the hole, and Deneen and got the two. You see LaSalle set up in a 3-2 zone. They'll stay out on the shooters, Frazier and Tyrone Gilliams. Gilliams is number 10, Frazier number 11. He's got it now. Sat out practice yesterday with a hamstring pull. Gilliams for Duncan. That might have been partially blocked. Ball loose on the baseline. Last touch by LaSalle. That's Hassan Duncan's favorite spot on the baseline, but Simmons came out. He has to get the ball fake to get him up in the air. This is Jerry Simon, who, believe it or not, leads this team in rebounding. He's a threat to score at any time. See LaSalle, the front three guys, Jack Hurd, Overton, they're all out on the three-point shot. They're not going to let Penn just, they're not going to sit in the zone and let Penn fire over the top. Clearly, they want to take care of this backcourt here in Frazier and Gilliams. Here's Gilliams down the lane. I don't know if he meant to bank it, but he'll take the deuce. I'm sure he didn't, but the charm life continues as he knocks it off at the 2-2 game. Minute gone. Game two of the Justin's Philadelphia Classic. Again, the man for the Quakers. Here's Simmons on Simon. Wow. And I think Lionel will just want to go right at Jerry, although Jerry is a very good defensive player. Yeah, but they can post Lionel Simmons up against Simmons. They should be able to get some uh, a mismatch there. They have to swing the ball over to Simon's area. Simmons, excuse me.
Sal here using the shot clock. They have 15 seconds to shoot. This is Leverst. He'll give it up. And now Conlon for Simmons with five. In on Simons. Simmons just got the height advantage. I don't like the matchup at all. Jerry Simons on Simmons if you're going to have to play man-to-man. -man. Good aggressive LaSalle defense to trap him. Let's see if they could swing it. Here's Duncan with a move, and he walks. Very good defense. A good trap in the corner by Jackie Hurd and Kylan. They swung the ball. Hossam Duncan shuffled the foot. Duncan at 6'7", they say 250. He is a house. I'm telling you. 2-3 now for Pennsylvania. So I guess they just wanted to show him some man. Here's Simmons going to work. Well, there's the problem. They went zone, but the middle was wide open. You got to know where Lionel Simmons is at all time. And Jackie Hurd picks up a quick foul, his first. Simmons there falling to the hardwood. First foul of the game, LaSalle up by four. Pennsylvania will retain possession with a fresh 45. As you can see, LaSalle is not going to be taken lightly. They, they know Penn's going to be very tough, and they're jumping right on them early, try to put them away. It is amazing that LaSalle, an NCAA tournament team last year, did not win at all in the Big Five. Lost by three to Villanova and Temple, lost by five to Penn, and lost by ten to St. Joe's. They're already one in the win column, beating St. Joe's earlier this year. Pennsylvania trying for their second victory in the Big Five. It's been a while since they've done that. Simon, some good defense by Leverst with 20 seconds to go on the shot clock. Williams tried to leave it there for Frazier, and a foul there is going to be called against Doug Overton. Well, the knock on Penn's offense is there's not much scoring inside, so I don't think LaSalle's real concerned with the ball going inside. They're awfully concerned with the ball going outside and shooting, so they're way out there and letting inside action for Penn, which they're not capitalizing on. Fresh 45 for the Quakers here after the foul called against Doug Overton. Here's Simons with Simmons right on him. Very active 2-3 by LaSalle. As Simmons going baseline here. Has it in the corner. LaSalle really extending their defense nicely. And they're trapping Simons in the corner. And here's Simmons. He's got Overton with him. Looks at the numbers and drives. And scores. Tom Snyder may need an early timeout. But he can't let it get out of hand. As Simmons now has six points of the of the eight LaSalle points. And again, that 3-2 to take care of the perimeter people from Penn. It's 8-2 to two LaSalle. We have played three minutes and 20 seconds of this game two of the Justins Philadelphia Classic. This has been Penn's problem in all their big five contests. They get down early. They got to stay in there. And that's Simons. They want to unleash Jerry Simons. He's an excellent scorer. Simon, I should say, the junior out of LaSalle or uh, Los Angeles. He had been somewhat of a reluctant shooter. But he's beginning to find the range. And, of course, they really need his scoring up front. 8-4, to four, LaSalle by 4. And that's Jack Hurd coming down and canning one for the baseline. Hurd, not just a spot-up guy. He'll put it on the floor if he's got some maneuvering room, and he did right there. That's a freshman. Not a bad move for a freshman. Powers it down to the baseline. A little bit of trouble stops and takes a jumper and makes the two. Simon over everything. Dunk him. Whoa! You don't want to be sitting in the stands with Hassan Duncan coming at you. And a timeout is being taken by Tom Schneider. With 15 minutes, 49 seconds to go here in the first half. Game two. And LaSalle off to an early lead. Nice using the glass there, Lionel Simmons. This one is just a drive and layup between two players, Penn defenders, and he scores. They have to know where that man, number 22, Lionel Simmons, the All-American candidate for LaSalle, is at all times. But Mark Penn has come out flat. They got to get either take the lead or make themselves a presence early in the game in these big five contests. They certainly have their fans here, many of them joining, uh, I guess, the bandwagon that began hitching up shortly after the victory against Villanova. A sal up six, though, with the ball. Hurt can't get it down. 
and Shelton just into the game for LaSalle comes up with a loose ball that's the freshman Don Shelton out of Trenton Central I'm a bit surprised to see him into the game this early he replaces Milko Leverst and a walk The backup center, or the other freshman center, 6'11", Steve Reed. He's been uh, having some flu problems, so perhaps uh, Speedy Morris going a bit deeper onto the bench now and taking Shelton, another freshman at 6'8", 200 pounds. Number 40 for Penn, Scott Shayway has entered the lineup for, for Deneen. And another five-second call, this one against Pennsylvania. Good trapping defense by LaSalle. And what LaSalle did against St. Joe Hawks on Monday evening did a great job trapping causing a lot of turnovers or doing it early in the contest against the uh, Quakers. And we have another turnover. We have a turnover-filled last two, three possessions. Speedy Morris not happy. Yeah, he's touching that tie. It's going to come. I don't mm -hmm. know if that clip makes it impossible or what. I don't know why he even bothers to put it on sometimes. <laughs> His wife makes him wear it. Nobody scored in a while. It's still 10-4 LaSalle. Good hustle there by Conlin. The glue of this Explorer team. Very scrappy. Gives you a little bit of everything. Some rebounding, some scoring. He's the senior out there. And Penn with possession. And that LaSalle defense continues to extend. Penn's going to have to look for the diagonal pass or what they call the skip pass. Skip the closest guy to you and go diagonally at the ball. They get it in to Sheaway, and he gets it. Scott Sheaway, a junior, 6'5", 219, out of Sheboygan, Michigan. If he looks a little hefty to you, that's because he was a defensive back on the football team. 10-6, LaSalle with a ball up four. Overton. And a board for Simmons, who goes right back. Shelton. And it's knocked out of bounds by Jerry Simon. Last touch by Penn. Good job by the Explorers to keep the ball hot and they'll get the ball out of bounds. Let's see if they try to score right off the out-of-bounds play. A new 45 for LaSalle. Overton for Hurd. Boy, he's got a nice stroke, doesn't he? Three oh, he's for not Jack afraid Hurd. to shoot it. Last week against St. Joe, he missed a couple shots and then he didn't take it. Speedy called him over and said, you better shoot the ball. You'll be sitting next to me, son. And the, he's not afraid to shoot the ball. <laughs> Heard shooting almost 50% from three-point territory. 12 for 25 coming in. Here's a two for Gilliams. Dunk him. Might have had it blocked there underneath. Loose ball taken by Conlon. Knocked away from him, and a Pennsylvania foul is going to come up against Gilliams. Hassam Duncan did a good job on the offensive glass to keep it in control. Came out, but... Williams hits him on the arm. Watch Hassan Dunk. Let's see if he uses his body. Let's see. He holds down. Good move with the left hand. Holds down Lionel Simmons so he can't jump. Just can't get it back. And they wanted the foul. And Jackie heard there. They didn't get it. Once Duncan has position, there's just no way you're going to get around him. There's the just no way. The round mound of uh, Penn? If you care to coin it as such. <laughs> LaSalle 7 with the ball. 13 20 to go first half. Simmons. As things break down and the Penn defense converges, very, very wary of Lionel Simmons, and we'll see who is picked out of the pack by Peter Pavia. It's going to be number 24, Dean Watts, just put into the game, the sophomore swingman out of Conestoga High School. In the meantime, Steve Reed, who's coming off of an illness, replaces Don Shelton, who gave Speedy Morris some quality minutes. Right, Shelton did a good job for Speedy, but Dane Watts, who's checked in for Penn, number 24 from Conestoga High School, can shoot the ball, and that's what they, Tom Snyder needs right now. And there's Hurd again for three, yep. He can shoot two. <laughs> Second three-pointer for Hurd, who suddenly has eight. Simmons has six, and it's a ten-point spread as LaSalle really extends the defense now at the half court. Looks like they might, uh, now they flatten out to a three-two. It looked as though they might have trapped a little bit, and indeed they're trapping in those, uh, those corners. This is Watts for three. And going over the top is Duncan as Simmons had the good position. And the foul is going to be called on Hassan Duncan. That is his first in the team's third. Well, Penn moved the ball pretty well in that possession. That's what they wanted. Dana Watts, that's when he's in the air ball to shoot the ball. It's an air ball, not an air ball, but a long shot. Hassan Duncan goes over the top one. It's his first foul. Bob Johnson, who was a teammate of Lionel Simmons at South Philadelphia High School, but he's no longer known as just that. He really carving his own niche. He's a very good outside shooter, and he is in there now into the game. 
He's at one of the forward spots. Simmons for three. He was two for five going in. And a nice loose ball rebound by Overton. And Penn needs those loose balls. Here's Simmons again. And the rebound is taken by Sheaway. Well, they were the loose balls they were coming up against Villanova. LaSalle just out hustling them to the ball right now. Penn down 10. They get it to dunk them. And a rebound to Johnson. And that was a bad shot. That wasn't even close. Awesome Duncan didn't even face the basket. He was turning and shooting at the same time. Almost a walk there. And he did walk. Simmons walks with a basketball, turn it over, give it to Penn. And another substitution now. Ray Marshall coming into the game, replacing Duncan. Marshall, Duncan's back up. The sophomore, 6'7", 230 out of Virginia Beach. He'll be wearing number 52 as Duncan sits down. I think maybe uh, Tub Schneider wants him to watch the game a little bit because Hassan does not look like he's in the game right no, now. No, Hassan is struggling a little bit inside, and Ray Marshall's not known for his offense, but again, he's known one of those six foot seven bangers in there, and he'll give everything he has to Tom Schneider trying to rebound the basketball inside. Again, the Quakers come down looking at the 3 2. They trail it by 10. This is Watts and Gilliams, and now Frazier, who hasn't shot yet, but a nice look there for Sheaway, who tries to pump fake his way in, and he gets two. Well, what Scott Sheaway's given him four points early, but when the ball's going inside, at least he's giving him some offense. If LaSalle has to collapse a little bit on Sheaway, it could open for the outside guards. Hurt again. Hurt trying to keep it going, cannot that time. Watt, and also Frazier there, and here comes Frazier. Hurt knocked it away, but Watts is right there. And now Penn wants to uh, get a good shot here. Down by eight. Sheaway again. Nice look for Marshall. Goes baseline. Might have walked. And let's see if that's the call that is. Ray Marshall took too many steps. Craig Conlon now coming into the game. And he is replacing Jack Hurd. So Hurd sits down as the game's leading scorer with eight. And his team up eight with just over 11 minutes to play. Here in game two, first half. LaSalle and Penn battling for the right to beat Long Beach. Winners in the first game over Drexel, 92 to 84. Ray Marshall's trying to be physical with Lionel Simmons. Simmons against Watts. <laughs> what can you say about that? It's not bad defense by Dane Watts as he's right there. Just a couple little pump fakes. He goes over him. Lionel Simmons. Simmons now with eight. And again, a 10 point margin for the Explorers. LaSalle doing a real nice job on Walt Frazier extending that zone. We talked about it. He is not getting an opportunity for a shot. You know, it's funny. LaSalle did not have a good practice yesterday as Frazier bombs away from three. Can't get it. And there's Conlon and Reed to go up. Conlon hits the deck and he is fouled. LaSalle did not have a good practice yesterday. They have come out strong. Penn before the Villanova game did not have a good practice. And, of course, they came out strong against the Wildcats. Is right here. Conlon is fouled by Sheaway. A good call there is Craig Conlon looking up and saying, what do you do here? But Sheaway had two fouls, one on Steve Reed. They didn't call. And then right there on Conlon. 14 fouls now on Penn, only two for LaSalle. And they had the ball up 10. Overton got a step on Simon. Conlon with a big offensive board. He was also fouled on the way up, but might have been Sheaway. We'll wait to see what the call is, but Conlon will go to the strike. Well, Conlon was not going to be denied right there. Conlon, six foot six, just from LaSalle High School here in Philadelphia. Just strong rebound. Scott Shea with another foul up there. Doesn't get the roll, but he'll go to line for two with LaSalle holding a 10 point advantage. Craig Conlon makes the first. Senior forward out of Glenside, Pennsylvania. Now coming into the game is Jose Tavares, who replaces Scott Sheaway. Look for LaSalle. They make the three throws, put some kind of pressure on Penn, some kind of full court pressure. Not really a pressing, trapping team too much, but uh, why not with the 12 point lead after the made foul? And there they go down court. So much for your scouting. Well, half court. There we go. <laughs> half court. Speedy should have went full court. He went half court. I'll tell him after the game. 1 2 2 trap it is. Let's see how Penn attacks it. They were working on the trap a great deal in practice yesterday, expecting the Explorers to trap a little bit more. And Simmons with a turnover. Has Overton. <laughs> well, Lionel Simmons is showing me tonight how he can handle the ball and do a lot of things as Penn needs another timeout. Timeout for Tom Schneider. His team suddenly down 14 with 9 minutes 52 seconds to go here in game two of the Justin's Philadelphia Classic. 16 pen at 36% 4 for 11. 
Well, we'll see the Lionel Simmons. Great hands here defensively. And watch how he handles the ball. The, they have him listed 6'6". Six, six. He's probably 6'8", six, but he handles the ball so well as he goes in for the two. Goes right by Jerry Simons there. I'll tell you, he's some kind of player. He's, going, he's an All-American candidate, and he's going to make a lot of money in a couple years. Yeah, he'll make some, that's for sure. Penn now looking once again at a 1-1-2-1 one, one, one LaSalle trap. Now they flatten it out a bit as they come into the forecourt. I thought you almost gave too many players there when you said that. <laughs> I don't know. It looked 1-1-2-1. One, one, one. I might have been wrong. It, it seemed as though they extended it so much. That's the way the alignment was. Frazier misses, and it's one and done for Penn. They have not gotten an offensive rebound, maybe one, here in the early going. And Walt Frazier hasn't come close. Bobby Johnson, streak shooter. And we have some pushing off underneath, and Lionel Simmons gives us the preliminary indication that it is against Pennsylvania. It's against Ray Marshall. And for Marshall, that's his first and the 15th foul on Penn. Well, Walt Frazier's definitely struggling this evening. And their lack of an inside game, I think, clearly being exploited here as Simmons, the big inside game, and he holds his fist high in the air triumphantly as he gives the Explorers their largest lead of the game at 16. I don't know, Mark, if it's inside, outside. He's done a little bit of everything. The jumper, the drives, the turnaround jumper. He's just everything tonight. And he is trying to be everything, trying to incorporate the three-pointer. Here's Simon trying to get it going. Johnson in there for the loose ball, steps in front of Marshall and knocks it out of bounds. It'll be pen ball with a fresh 45. Bill Helm getting set to check in in a moment. Helm, a freshman, as Schneider's pulling them all out now, trying to get some combination to work here on the floor for the Quakers. Here's Simon. Jerry Simon with four, and Shayway with four. But they're down 14. Overton. And Simon with a board. Again, to repeat, Simon is the leading rebounder at 6'6", at 7.3 a game. Simon trying to heat it up. And they needed that best play, a 3-point, 24-13, now an 11-point LaSalle lead, and brings the Penn faithful a little bit into the game. A lot more Penn faithful, I think, here tonight, due in part to that Villanova victory earlier this week. But uh, let's focus on LaSalle now. That's the team at hand. 24-13, Penn to within 11. Overton. His first two. That's Bobby Johnson. That's Bobby Johnson. For two points, and LaSalle did a nice job running their offense. Bobby Johnson got loose on the baseline. 26-13, LaSalle by 13. And we have a whistle. Foul coming up against LaSalle. They got Lionel Simmons for pushing off. They moved their offense. Ray Marshall set the screen, and Lionel Simmons said, well, I'm not going to go around it. I'll go through it. He picks up his foul. Now we have wholesale changes now. Jack Hurd coming back, and also Milko Lievers coming back for LaSalle. And coming into the game, we have Bill Helm replacing Dane Watts. So it'll be Penn basketball now with a fresh 45. This is Helm's first taste of Big Five. Ray Marshall gets loose. And a nice play there by Taveras to get it into Marshall. And again, penned within 11. The largest LaSalle lead was 16. And we have seven and a half to play here in the first half. Now Helm's going to cover Conlon. Conlon has the strength on Helm if he wants to post him. And Penn here in the man-to-man, -man, and Conlon puts it right up as he got a step in the man-to-man -man on Bill Helm. Helm... Again, it's his first game. He's a little nervous from Lewistown, Pennsylvania. Get in there. He didn't feel Colin. Colin got there and scored. Tyrone Williams with it now. Now they swing it for Simon. He's been the main offensive force. Weak side, two LaSalle players there, both Hurd and Simons. Simmons. I'm so, now I'm nuts with Simons and Simmons. Here's Lionel. That'll make it easier. One hand, he's just doing everything he wants. 15-point lead for Speedy Morris and the Explorers. 
And now they wrestle it away. There is Levers throwing an elbow or two at Ray Marshall. And here comes the Explorers. A bucket here, and I smelled a Penn timeout, perhaps, but a traveling call against Hurd. And Penn now will take possession. Coming into the game for Pennsylvania is Sean Deneen. He takes the place of Ray Marshall, Deneen number 32. And a substitution now for LaSalle as Bobby Johnson coming into the game replacing Craig Codman. See a little 1 2 2 or a 1 3 1, whatever speed he's in, a little half court trap against Penn Quakers. Of course, the key for Penn here now, and a nice alert play there by Lieberst, who has had his hand in on a number of passes. Walt Frazier Jr. has been out for a good three to four minutes for Penn. He is getting set to check back in and he was one of the keys for the Quakers tonight. Simmons. Trying to show he could hit that jumper. And Penn coming back. Well, Penn can get a turnover or two and a couple of easy baskets. They'll be right back into it. And there's a walk. Again, too much individual play on both ends a little bit. They're trying for their own instead of letting the offense to flow of the game. And there's a concern. Tom Snyder, head coach of the Quakers, looking on. He has reason to be concerned. Eight turnovers for the Quakers. They are not a good rebounding team, and they can ill afford to give up possessions by way of turnovers. But here, they're only getting one shot and not crashing the offensive boards. LaSalle doing a great job defensively. Here's Simmons. And Frazier has it, and here they come. But LaSalle back nicely defensively, and well, Frazier Jr. will have to check it out and slow it up. Look how that defense is just extended. Right, in the mid, something has to be open, in the mid, and the inside is open, but again, Speedy Morris and LaSalle coaching staff is not concerned with the ball going inside that much. There it went inside, and it went off the fingertips of Deneen and out of bounds. That was a nice look by Frazier, but Deneen could not handle it. Speedy's got the coat off. Scott See? Shayway getting back uh, for Penn in just a moment. There's Hurd, who had the touch earlier, and it looks as though it's going to be a foul on Milko Lievers, the freshman out of... Amsterdam, the Netherlands, was redshirted last year due to stress fractures in both feet. He's played a very good defensive game. Another substitution once again. That's Scott Shayway coming in, and he replaces the freshman Bill Helm. The one problem Penn has a 15-point deficit. That's a major problem, but the other problem is they got to go man-to-man. -man. I think LaSalle runs real nice things. One-four type offense, man-to-man. -man. Simon. Simmons with a board. Simmons, the leading rebounder, the leading scorer and the leader of the team. There he goes, a 1-4 set. They run it, there's wide open layup. I mean, Simmons got by Simon that time, who's just unable to keep up with Simmons at all. But you're not supposed to get on the first cut. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, that little, that's poor defense by the Quakers. They got to play it a little bit harder than that. 17-point lead now. Simmons with 16 points for LaSalle. The 17-point margin is the largest. It's 32-15. to 4-14 to go here in the half. Simon connects. Jerry Simon is the whole offense for the Quakers. He has 10 points. The other players are not even getting their shots off right now. If they're patient, they'll get good shots. Penn and the man, as I guess they're trying to force some things at the defensive end, but Hurd around the screen is able to can the jumper. The Explorer's really shooting very oh, well. Oh yeah, that's too. pretty good defense right there. It's not bad. Jackie Hurd just makes a good individual move. Speedy thinks they're a better shooting team, and they'll show it in January and February than they were last year. Another shot by Jerry Simon, a three-pointer. It's a big three for Simon, who's trying to bring him back. He was shooting 55% from three-point territory coming in. He's the second leading three-point shooter to Walt Frazier, who's been nowhere so far in the first half, any part of his game whatsoever. But again, that extended 3-2 LaSalle defense has been causing some problems with the shooters and also clogging the passing lanes. And Penn goes back in the zone, which is their best defense. But there, let's see if Lionel, he just shakes. What defense you want to play against? Do you go box and one? What's he have, 18 in the first half? 18 is correct for Lionel Simmons. He's averaging just a shade under 26 a game. He's going to get it, I think. Good <laughs> chance. Wow, LaSalle looks awfully good this evening. Williams. 
Four points now for the Camden High product. Transfer out of Ryder. Now, is this a box? Jerry Simon is covering Lionel Simmons. It's a triangle and one or a box and one. Four Quakers playing a zone defense. One man, Jerry Simon, covering Lionel Simmons for LaSalle. They're calling one out LaSalle. They got good shooters. If you're isolating, that's Simmons underneath with number 23, that's Simons. But, hey. That's the problem, Mark. It's, you know, not a bad move by Tom Sutter to go box and one or triangle one, but they shoot the ball too well to sell the other players. Johnson now has five in the game after that three-pointer. And it's 39-22. The Explorers match their largest lead at 17. And Levers with another board. Loose ball, Simon, and he had a three-on-one break and a nice job there by Doug Overton to keep Pennsylvania from having the numbers advantage and getting the easy basket. Jerry Simon has been the bulk of the offense here in the first half. There was a foul on the play. It was on Doug Overton, his second, the fifth on the team. As we have Craig Conlon now coming into the game, replacing Milko Lieberst. And Sam Rines, the son of the assistant coach, Sam Rines comes in to give Doug Overton a blow. And that's just what he's used for when Overton picks up uh, two fouls, let's say, in the first half or any sort of foul trouble. So Rines and Johnson now in the LaSalle backcourt. And there's another turnover for the Quakers, and for them that is 10 in the first half. Just not doing it. Again, is it a letdown from the big win on Tuesday night? Good move, and Deneen is just caught with his feet, <laughs> and he has to foul. Ever wonder what happened to Craig Littlepage, that former head coach of Pennsylvania, went on, of course, to Rutgers. You know where he is right now? I would say he is somewhere in coaching. Sort of. Sort of. We will have the Craig Littlepage story coming up. Very introspective man, a very educated man, as Hassan Duncan comes into the game. Craig Littlepage. I remember him as a player in the early 70s. Yeah. Phil Hanson. Chel Cheltenham High School. He was a senior when I was a freshman here. Craig, uh, a very fine player in the, in the 70s for the Quakers. Heard misses at the line. LaSalle with that 17 point margin again, matching their largest. Minute 17 to go. Quakers don't need Craig Littlepage or me. They need scores like a Ronnie Hagler or John <laughs> Somebody put the ball in the basket right now. For somebody big inside like a Bobby Morris to give him something strong inside. That was Gilliams who's got six now. Second to Simon who's got 12. It's been an otherwise anemic Pennsylvania attack in the first half. And a rare LaSalle turnover. That is only their fifth. And the Quakers now with 54 on that first half clock. 45 on the shot clock. I don't know, do you put it up here very quickly and try for two possessions? Penn is going to wait it out now and look for the good shot. Got a nine second difference between the clocks. Simon, he's been the offense and he's got 14. So I think Speedy now will just hold it out for one last shot. 28 to go in the first half. The shot clock now turned off, and indeed they're going to wait. So a very frustrating first half for Pennsylvania as these guys, I'm sure, are going to class all week, hearing the adulation from the fans and the students, now are suddenly slammed back into reality, and they'll hear from Tom Schneider, no doubt, at halftime. As Overton took a walk, and that's a bit of a break for Penn now as they have five seconds to go to cut it to 11, maybe even 10 with a three-pointer. Schneider in his fourth year at Penn. Had a very young team last year, a little more experience this year. Let's see what happens here. Three seconds. Frazier off balance, and he got it. So... It doesn't look all that bad on the scoreboard. It had been as bad as 17. It is now down to 11. It is 39 to 28. LaSalle right now leading Pennsylvania by 11 points here at halftime. Clearly the story for LaSalle, the inside play of Lionel Simmons and the outside play of Jack Hurd. Simmons with 18 unofficially, Hurd with 10. Jerry Simon, the junior out of Los Angeles, the only real consistent offense for the otherwise anemic Quakers in that first half as he has 14 to lead them. But turnovers and other missed opportunities, a problem for Penn, and you can be sure that Tom Schneider 
We'll be banging a bit off the cinder block walls of that ancient pen locker room here at the Palestra, letting his Quakers know exactly how he felt about that first half. Remember, coming up here at halftime, we will have Craig Littlepage. We'll have some highlights for you and scores. But right now, the shot, Ed Stefanski, is with a coach who's got his work cut out for him, Tom Schneider. Shot. I can't believe you forgot to come over to see me. Yeah, I had a lot of things on my mind, like how you stop Lionel Simmons. He's incredible. He's just doing it. You go in zone. You want the triangle one. He's scoring everything you put out. Yeah, and, and they're really, you know, Speedy's got them ready, and they're playing hard, and, and they're really playing well right now, and we're just going to have to make some adaptions. You know, and it's tough them coming off the emotional high we were on the other night, but we got to pick it up now. I mean, they're getting that zone, and they're really extending. They're taking away the outside shooters. They're almost letting you have the inside game. Yeah, and, and we got some early shots to Shayway, and then he gets in foul trouble. We got to get the ball inside a little bit more. And I tell you what, thank goodness Jerry's hitting the shots. Turnovers. You have uh, 12, I think, in the first game. Yeah, and we had 12 the whole game the other night. You know, it's just a matter of we got to get our heads into the game. We got to pick up our intensity. We got to do it on the defensive end now. Well, you narrowed it down a little bit here in the first half of the 11. Yeah, we started to play a little bit harder, too. Okay, I'll let you go back. Good luck. Thanks. Okay, Tom Snyder, an aggressive Tom Snyder, because he's got to do something in the second half. Mark Zumoff. Something is right. Down 11. Their work cut out for them as uh, LaSalle leads it right now 39 to 28. Stay with us. We'll have highlights of more coming up. I remember back in the 70s sitting way up there in the bleachers watching Phil Hankinson and a fellow by the name of Craig Littlepage who has since coached and get on to other things. Here's more. And right here, LaSalle showing no signs of being stopped as they lead Pennsylvania by 11, 39 to 28. But as you said in the, in the first half that this score is misleading because LaSalle really controlled the first half. So I think Tom Snyder, looking on, has to be very happy only being down 11. What did he say at halftime? He said he was very happy only being down 11. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he doesn't he look said, happy now. He, he's not happy. He, he, he said probably to the first five, you either play hard or you're coming right out. So let's see how the Quakers attack this 2-3 zone defense by LaSalle. Well, the Quaker fans fired up here as we begin this second half. Frazier and Gilliams with Duncan in the middle. And it is Scott Shayway at that power forward spot replacing Sean Deneen and Jerry Simon up front. So Shayway, the only change in the Pennsylvania starting lineup. The LaSalle starting lineup remains the same and we'll set it for you as they hit the offense. 15 on the shot clock. Penn trying to be more deliberate, but unfortunately Duncan but did not have a very good first half, loses out of bounds. Well, I think that was a forced pass by Tyrone Gilliams as he makes the bounce pass, but a tough pass when the big guy, 42, Duncan is trying to hold off a defender and try to catch the same time. It's a tough play for him. Overton, Hurd, that's Conlon, and that's Simmons out there with Levers. And Simmons might have been blocked, but a nice little follow-up there by Hurd, who's showing some nice instincts there by following up that block shot. It was a good block shot by Hassan Duncan, but he's right there as Frazier comes down, and no. Oh, yeah, he hits it too. A momentary lapse that time in the LaSalle defense, and Frazier has to take advantage of it right away. Pen down 11, 41-30, opening moment, second half. Loose ball. Wow, and Hurd hits the deck hard, and they say a foul on Duncan. And that is his second and the first of the second half. Well, has some Duncan. Penn showed a 2-2-1 press. There's a loss control. Let's see Duncan. He comes out hard for the ball. Good block, and oh, that has to, that'll smart tomorrow on Jackie Hurd. Both guys going for the basketball. Bob Johnson here may be coming in for her to give him a blow, and that's going to be the case. Bob Johnson in for the freshman, Jack Hurd. What a nice first half, picking up 10 points. This is, I'm all right. Coach, get me back in that line. Uh, he'll be back. Right into Simmons. Johnson there on the follow-up, and a good rebound by Sheaway. Penn looking to get to within nine. I don't think Penn has, Penn has had a transition basket the whole game. LaSalle's done a great job getting back on defense. And plus, you have to rebound the ball strongly to get a fast break. Wouldn't Ben Spiva look good on the Penn front line uh, right now? They could use him. Spiva, of course, forced to transfer to Memphis State for financial reasons. Penn being very deliberate now. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Now they're going to have to force something. This is Frazier with five. Shayway walks. 
it is a shame when you use that much shot clock and you are unable to get off any kind of a decent shot. I guess credit the LaSalle defense yeah, for not uh, giving up there. Well, you got to give LaSalle some credit. Plus, the, again, they're not going inside the pen because they don't have much offense in there. The Sixers, as you see, losing tonight. Overton for three. And let's see if Sheaway may have gone over the top. I think they got Milko Levers for right. going over the top. That is correct. Sixers now travel to the Palace at Auburn Hills to take on Detroit. That'll be tomorrow night and then Tuesday back here on Prism. 7.30 live from the Spectrum against the Milwaukee Bucks. And our buddy Chuck Daly, the coach of the Pistons. Simon, the hot hand of the first half, trying to continue it here. And Sim Simmons really went up for that one. Conlon. Well, what a luxury, Mark, when you have a player like Lionel Simmons who can rebound the basketball inside and then start the fast break, get the assist to Craig Conlon on the other end. 43-30, LaSalle over the Quakers of Pennsylvania. And we are almost three minutes into the second half. So Penn unable to mount a charge out of the locker room. LaSalle keeping their distance now up 13. Here's Gilliams. Gilliams with his first bucket of the second half. He's got eight. And again, it's an 11-point game. And we have a traveling violation. LaSalle only with six turnovers in that first half, so uh, they kept things for Speedy Mars pretty much under control. I guess what Penn has to do now, certainly, is to take advantage of these extra possessions. And the Quaker fans getting it going on the side opposite us. Williams, dunk them. And that's the kind of stuff you saw against Villanova. Right, second shot opportunity. It's a good move by Tyrone Gilliams to get the rebound and bring it back out, try to get a better shot, but they kept it alive on the offensive glass. Frazier, nice look, Sheaway. And it's a good pass, as you said, by Frazier. Sheaway saw Lionel Sims, but adjusts and Speedy doesn't want it to get away from him. He's going to call a timeout. So Penn trying to make a move. They have it to that halftime deficit of nine, 34-43. We'll have more for the Palestra right after this. Thank you. All right, stand by, replay on slow-mo A, roll A, and dissolve A. Good. Roll C, wipe C. Let's get white and out on camera eight over there. Nod so I know you're there, somebody. Ready, D. Get back to the coach on that. Okay, let's go to camera five, please. Whiten out. Ready, camera eight, take eight. <laughs> I didn't know your family was in town. <laughs> go to camera two. Nice work, people, very nice work. For the teamwork, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood-aged Budweiser. So what are you gonna do tonight? Probably watch TV. Well, of the four players that Penn runs out of the power forward spot, Scott Shaway's been the most effective tonight. Well, he's the best offensive player. As he goes in, he has to readjust the shot looking at Lionel Simmons. But that's what Tom Snyder and the Quakers need. They need some inside scoring threat. Shaway's going to give it to them. If they can, if LaSalle now has to bring it in, that will open it up for Frazier, Gilliams, and Simon. But let's see what LaSalle, Speedy Morris called a quick timeout, and I'm sure he's going to try to do something different. Yeah, undoubtedly diagramming something in the huddle. Let's see if the Explorers can come out and put it up by 11. They're up by nine with the ball. Four minutes gone, second half. For three. Last touch by LaSalle, yes. We see pretty good defense there. Good blocking out by the smaller Walt Frazier and Milko Levers. It's a nine-point advantage. If Penn can score here, you'll see the Penn faithful. They'll be rocking here at the Palestra. Sal trapping here, trying to slow the pen offense up just a bit. 
Quakers need to get inside of that nine-point deficit. They have not gotten inside nine in a while. Simon can do it. He led them in scoring at halftime with 14. He's got it now. Yeah, that's, a, that's the bucket they need. Now they got the crowd on their side. They're making the run at LaSalle. Six points, but LaSalle is a veteran ball club. And a three-pointer by Simon, who's shooting well over 50% from three-point territory coming in. 43-37, we got a game. They're going to the money, man. Blocked by Duncan. And we got a foul maybe before that block. Let's see. Well, what happened was Jerry Simon, who's only about 6'4", 6'5", was trying to keep out Milko Levers. What's there? Milko Levers does a great job getting inside position, number 44, on Simon 23. And it'll be a two-shot foul. The foul is on Duncan. It is his third. And just that quickly, he comes out of the game to be replaced by Ray Marshall. Marshall wearing number 52. And Levers, who has played one of his best games, I think, in his young career, he's not given up a lot of points, but he's given up some defense, some presence, as they like to say, and some rebounding. Well, he's been very aggressive on the boards, and that's the whole thing Speedy Morris wants him to do. He has the three guys, Reed, Levers, to play inside, and then you see Tommy Snyder looking on because his Quakers are making a run. Levers to only a 33% foul shooter coming in. LaSalle not an especially good foul shooting team at 64%. One of two puts LaSalle up seven. This is Simon. And up there is Marshall, the middleman, to help break this trap. And they do so, and now they'll set up. Milko Levers, number 44 for LaSalle. Very active inside the painted area. For two, and it's good. And Schneider's looking for three, and he's not going to get it. He smiles at referee Tim Higgins. But what happened there, Mark? They got the ball inside a little bit to Sheaway. Now he's been a factor. They had a collapse. He gets it out to Gilliams for the two. 44-39, five points for LaSalle. Conlin. And nobody there but white-shirted Pennsylvania Quakers as Gilliams brings it out. Frazier try to get something going before LaSalle can get set up, and now they decide to set the offense and run the clock a little bit. 44-39, pin down five with the ball. Frazier's doing a good job coming him down. There's three. And Sheaway, was he forced out of bounds? The foul is called. The foul is on Lieberst. How about Sheaway? Not recruited for basketball, recruited for the football program quarterback. Can't play quarterback. He wants to be a. They want him to be a safety. Comes out for Tom Snyder. Sheaway's got four rebounds to lead Pennsylvania. He's been tough. There was the foul on Levers, and he is replaced by Don Shelton, the freshman, who had some minutes earlier in the first half. He in helped Simmons here in the trap. Well, it was either a timeout by Marshall or a turnover, so he'll take the timeout. With 14 minutes and two seconds to go, Pennsylvania making their move now. They trail it by five. For the pride, for the dream, for the love, and for the team, for the sweat and for the drive, for the reason, reason you strive. For all you do, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. This Bud's for you, but this Bud's for you. The women's market has been the driving force behind the demand for walking shoes. What's new? Stop over to Lady Foot Locker. We have two great new walking shoes. The Nike Air Walker Plus has the air cushion midsole, and the Fitness Walker by Reebok has the spring system midsole for extra cushioning. Both have soft garment uppers and great heel-to-toe support for walking. For casual footwear, walking shoes at Lady Foot Locker story on Reuben Hurricane Carter, the boxer who was jailed. He has quite a story, and he does not reveal it to many people, but he did to our own Jim Barniak, and you'll hear it all this December right here, exclusively on Prison. Yeah, if anybody sees my old partner, Jim Barniak, tell him to give me a call. You miss him? 
Oh, I always miss him. I miss him more in the golf course when I take his money. Uh, he'll be back Tuesday with Matt Gukas when the Sixers take on Milwaukee. But first things first, it's 44-39, pinned down by five of the ball. Man to man by LaSalle. They got out of the zone. There's Simons for three. Overton saves it. Gilliams. But what happened there, Mark, was they kept the ball alive. Ray Marshall batted up in the air, kept it alive for Tyrone Gilliams to put it in for two. 44-41, pinned down by three, and Speedy Mars is going nuts on the sideline. They tried to get it into Simmons, and he lost it out of bounds. Deja vu, the shirt tail's out, the tie's still on, but this is like Tuesday night, Raleigh Mazzamino was that man right there, and he had problems holding the lead. It's 44-41. Penn has never led in this game. They were down 2-0. They tied it at 2. They were down 8-2. And LaSalle has kept them a block away. Until now. Frazier. And a big board by Simmons. Simmons the man when you need it. The big board, the big shot, and he got it there. But still lots of time to go. 13 minutes and counting. Kerr. bucket by Jack Hurd as he just drove the baseline. He seems like he loves to go baseline. He knocks it down for two. Now it's a five-point LaSalle lead. And again, the Explorers out on the man-to-man. -man. Penn has spread the court out. Remember against Villanova, they did a good job, but Bryce was there covering, and Duncan was always an outlet. Here, LaSalle has five guys he can cover. Simon on the freshman Hurd, and boy, what a move by Jerry Simon to get ahead of Jack Hurd and force him into the foul. And Simon will earn two free throws. <laughs> and Speedy's shown, stay down, don't leave your feet. This is the first time that Pennsylvania has gotten to the line tonight. Undoubtedly, that has hurt them. Of course, you get to the line when you get the ball inside and you're able to draw the contact, and Penn has not been able to do right, that. Especially LaSalle was zoned the whole time. Now going man-to-man, -man, they'll get some more driving layups in the basket. But this guy, Jerry Simon, on the line has really come on for the Quakers. As we said, he's a junior. He struggled his first two years, scored a lot of points in high school, now scoring them for the Quakers. 81% at the line coming in only makes one, and it's pinned down four. LaSalle with a basketball. And Doug Overton calls the LaSalle timeout. With 12 minutes and 19 seconds to go. LaSalle 46, Pennsylvania 42 for the right to face Long Beach State in the finals tomorrow on Prism. We'll be back. Take a look right now at the Explorer faithful and they had a lot more to cheer about in the first half than they do right now. It was 39-28. LaSalle at halftime, and just some quick mathematics reveals a... I can't do it. I went to Wharton School. I don't want to do it. <laughs> 14, well, I went to Temple, so I can do it. 14-7. to 7, Penn has outscored LaSalle, and they've done it pretty much with uh, the system that they have to use, which is scrappy play. Right, and I think Speedy is a little upset, especially with his offense. They've gotten away a little bit. Quick shots on the offensive end, and they have a money player, and they're all American, Lionel Simmons. Maybe let's calm it down, move the ball, let's look for Lionel. If they're packing in that and shoot the ball, but let's get him more involved in the offense. He really hasn't handled the ball in the second half. And that man, Tom Snyder, his Quakers are playing a lot more enthusiasm here in the second half and banging and doing a good job on the boards. 12-16 remaining, LaSalle up four with the ball. Craig Conlon at side court in front of Speedy Morris and LaSalle to inbound. Let's see if he has a play right off of it. Overton creates for Simmons. Good if it goes. No doubt they were going to Lionel Simmons off the timeout. They made four or five passes, but Doug Overton, when he made the penetration, was looking for him all the time. Now is it a three-point shot? Step out on the arm. Those are Lionel Simmons' first points of the second half. He had 18 at halftime. They called the foul on Dane Watts. 
Tom Snyder's upset because he said it should have been a one-on-one shot as opposed to the three-point opportunity. But that's Lionel Simmons at the line trying to convert the three-point play. Simmons working on a streak of 55 straight double-figure games, and he can't complete the three-point play. Whistles from two of the three officials. He's hitting the deck is Tyrone Gilliams, the 6'2 junior out of Camden High School. He had nothing to do with it, too. Ray Marshall, Lionel Simmons, and Hurd were pushing and shoving there. Uh, Marshall was trying to get out, and I think Marshall, his own teammate, elbowed him in the face. So both coaches, Tom Schneider and Speedy Morris here, will take this time to talk with their team as... Williams is attended to right now by the Pennsylvania athletic trainer. Physical game, he's asking him what day it is, what time. Let's see now. Gilliams is taking the shooter, Lionel Simmons, right there. Now Marshall's just pushing. Oh, no, Hurd got him. Mm -hmm. He got upset with Marshall pushing Hurd. Hurd got him right in the uh, nose right there. But he's okay. First ever Camden High product to play for any Big Five school, Tyrone Gilliams. And he will come out of the game right now. And Dane Watts will come in. Ray Marshall up front for Penn along with Scott Sheaway. He's done a wonderful job, Simon. And Watts will help Frazier bring it up who's got it now. Here's Simon, but Simmons is back, so he'll think better of it. Penn down six with the ball. Less than 12 minutes to go, second half. Aisha missed it, Long Beach 92, Drexel 84 in game one, despite John Rankin's 33. Frazier for three, what a pull by Sheaway, and he gets it down. Well, again, it's a, an air ball almost, and Scott Shea was just there. LaSalle was trying to box out. Simmons is going to make it. And Sheaway with a rebound. He'll be there till the end now, the way he's playing. With all this rotation with Deneen and Kern and whatever, Sheaway is the man right now at that power forward spot. Simon. What a decision, though. They got the ball into Scott Sheaway. He turned to face. He had nothing. He dumps it right back out to Simon. That's a new career high for Jerry Simon. He has 20 points in this game, and he goes to the line to try to make it 21. The foul is on Simmons, his second, and the fourth on LaSalle. So again, the Quakers will try to creep to within one. And they're showing some full court pressure themselves right now against LaSalle. This is what you don't want, the two on one. That was very, very easy. He just threw over the top. All four Penn Quakers were in half court. They threw over the top, two on one. Lionel Simmons makes the play to her. That's the danger when you trap. But you could give up that easy basket. You very quickly have that two on one. The South goes back three. man to man. Excuse me. You get a bit of a weave going here. To look back door for somebody if they could shake it loose. That's well, a good move too. Also, they're taking that 45 second clock, trying to limit the time on that clock. And there's a foul by Hurd as Frazier went by. Hurd reached in and committed his third personal, and it is suddenly five team fouls now on the side. Well, what Penn did against Villanova in the major upset is they made it a one-shot game, as Raleigh Massimino alluded after the game, and that's what they're trying to do here against a superior LaSalle team, make it a one-shot game try to run that 45 second clock down on every possession. Penn here with a new 45. Good luck, Frazier, and Marshall with a layup. A good double team by Liss a bad double team, excuse me, as Frazier stepped through it and hit Ray Marshall for a wide open shot. Again, Pennsylvania, who has never led in this game, gets to within one, and we'll be back. You know the face, you know. He makes the good look into Ray Marshall, uses the glance for two to narrow it down to a one point with Sally. Speedy Morris calls timeout, I'm sure he's not happy at all but on the defense, but on the offensive end, they're just not moving the ball and not turning over the offense to get the better shot. Penn has outscored them 21 to 11 here thus far in the half, and we are halfway through the second half. Man to man by Penn as Overton is matched up with Frazier. 
See if they try to shake Lionel loose here, the man-to-man. -man. They go right to him with Simon. They converge. Si Simmons has it. And let's see. Foul before the shot. Yeah, Jerry Simon again on the foul. He can't, can't get him inside there. They're not going to call it before the shot. Only the first on Jerry Simon and the fourth team foul. Very difficult to go man-to-man -man when you don't have someone who can cover si uh, Simmons. Another foul. And that was Marshall reaching over. So very quickly now, Pennsylvania with five team fouls. And it's the second on Marshall. Explorers here with a fresh 45, leading by one. Tim Higgins briefly talking with Sheaway, just making sure that he gives LaSalle enough room to inbound the ball. They run it for her. Overton. Real nice bucket by Doug Overton. How, is that his first of the night? Two points. First of the night. Took the baseline driving jump shot. It's for a guy who's the second leading scorer, averaging 16 a game. Overton there with a steal as Marshall had the offensive board, but Doug Overton stepped on the baseline, and Penn will have a fresh 45 and another opportunity. See if they try to get Frazier the shot. He'll be inbounding the basketball. And Sheaway fields it. Penn three for 15, three-point shooting. They came in as a team, certainly shooting much better than that. 28% and a traveling violation on Pennsylvania. Walt Frazier tried to do a little too much there and he got caught with the basketball and he walked. So LaSalle now will try to create some breathing room up three with 9.24 to go, clock running here at the Palestra. And zoning up now. We're right on Johnson, he could shoot for three-point territory, so can that man Hurd. Simmons, good look inside for the cutting Johnson. And we have a grabbing foul coming up, being called by Tim Higgins. That's going to be, Marsh. I believe, on Ray Marshall. His fourth mark, and again, LaSalle took their time this time, made some good passes, and watch the slice cut by Bobby Johnson, and Lionel Simmons catches his former high school teammate from Southern High School, and Marshall gets him. Marshall is gotten now by Vince Curran, who comes into the game to take Marshall's place again with four. Curran, his first appearance, the sophomore forward out of St. Joe's Prep, former Catholic League Player of the Year. Heard with a miss and a rebound to Simon. Here comes Penn, but three LaSalle players back. Frazier looks in for Curran, who just got into the game, yeah. and the ball is knocked out of bounds by LaSalle. So just that quickly, Curran is involved. And there it is. Speedy, the Bye. ties off, the shirts out, 8.57 left. But that was not a wise decision by Walt Frazier. He should have just brought it back because what's Vince Curran going to do going 80 miles an hour catching the ball with defenders right in front of him? And a little tidying up there in that offensive lane of Pennsylvania. They trail it by three. Again, they have never led in this game. Sal zoning up. They're trying to get Frazier. He's running baseline to baseline with a lot of screens, but good defense. Frazier with only four points. Simon briefly now goes. Curran had it, lost it. Off of Curran, out of bounds. LaSalle takes possession. There's my man, and I've been working on getting him a uh, men's shop contract. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. No use. Eight and a half to play. Simmons. Well, a pretty good defense there. Three Penn players are surrounding Lionel Simmons, but he's just so strong he gets it off and he puts LaSalle to a five-point advantage. Simmons shooting 11 for 21. He's got 22 in the game. And LaSalle with a little breathing room now at five. And the Explorers manning up here. Overton right on Walt Frazier. Frazier, the leading scorer with a mere four points in the game. Tries to break down his man, and he got it. That's what we saw the other night. As he went one-on-one, -on -one, nice spin move, used his body to get the defender off and knock it down. Frazier having a tough night shooting three for nine from the field. He's got six. He averages 22-7. And Simon with a big rebound, knocked to the floor, and they say he traveled. 
You're right, they're down three, 738, went up high to get the rebound, but he and Vince Kern, his own teammate, collided. Jerry Dunnegy, the referee there, has the walk. More bodies for Pennsylvania going out as Simon. Jose Taveras comes in for Tom Schneider. I don't think Simon will sit for long. A quick blow for Simon, I'm sure. 7.38 to play, Penn trailing three. LaSalle, 54, Penn 51, they have the basketball. They get it to Simmons. Too hard, weak side, Johnson, and he's fouled from behind. I believe it was Sheaway. But what happens there is when Lionel Simmons gets the ball, they all have to surround him. Watch the Quakers. There's two guys. Somebody has to be open rebounding the ball, and that's Bobby Johnson. Scott Sheaway got caught underneath the basket as opposing to, to block uh, Johnson out. Johnson's going to go to the line for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Yep, Penn is in the penalty, the third personal foul. Two shots. LaSalle has one foul to take with seven and a half to play. Bob Johnson. He used to be known as Lionel Simmons' South Philly High School teammate, but he's kind of carved out his own niche. And in fact, when he's in the game, the Explorers believe they have their best team out there. And they have that situation there right now as they sit the big people, Lieberst and Shelton. And good defensive pressures. You see, they're a lot more athletic with Johnson. And there's the steal. And Hurd slows it up wisely as LaSalle now will take time. Time? What time? Johnson with a jumper, no good. Conlin and a fresh 45 for LaSalle. That's Conlin. Craig Conlin scores the two, but I'll tell you what, Doug Over can set it up. He calmed him down, made some penetration, gave him the two. So LaSalle suddenly expands its lead at 58 to 51 as Pennsylvania keeps creeping back, creeping back, getting it into within one several times, but unable to get over the hump and take the lead. Well, Penn is showing their cur courage by keep pushing it in, you know, getting it the, the deficit down and down. But again, that's a veteran club you're looking at in the LaSalle Explorers. They got a lot of weapons and they utilize, and right there, Overton with the penetration and Town with the jumper. Let's take a look at some other action occurring tonight. Of course, earlier it was 92-84, Cal State Long Beach beating Drexel, and that's who the winner will take on tomorrow, 9 o'clock on Prism. St. Francis of Pennsylvania over Columbia and Iona beating Ryder. Indiana struggling this year, but a victory over Virginia Commonwealth. And a halftime score is, I guess, Alcorn State could produce only 13 points in one half. Penn State was supposed to be pretty tough in the Atlantic that? 10, and look, they got clocked. And BYU, the host team, leading right now. Illinois rolling it up over 8-10 opponent, Duquesne. Texas took care of Lehigh. In fact, I think I see Fran McCaffrey here tonight, the former he's here scouting, head coach. Right, he's scouting Penn. Notre Dame comes in January 3rd here in the Palestra against Penn. Frazier has it blocked by Johnson, and we have a foul, I believe, on Frazier as he collided there with Craig Conley. Well, Sal, Offensive foul is called. LaSalle doing a very good job double teaming. Frazier makes the penetration to the basket, but he just can't control himself and leans in and gets the offensive foul. The offensive foul is a turnover, the 16th. That's too many turnovers when you're playing a team like LaSalle. they got to cut the turnovers down in order to have a chance. And on the whole, they haven't been too bad this year. They have averaged five fewer turnovers than their opponents right. in the first three games. But tonight, not taking good care of the basketball. And when LaSalle gives them credit, doing a good job, especially double-teaming out of that zone. LaSalle up seven with the ball. Johnson for three. Well, that's what he is, a streak shooter. And Speedy Mars gives him his head and says, anytime you're open, fire it down. And that's a big one, 10-point advantage back up for LaSalle. With 6.18 to go and the clock running, and suddenly a factor as LaSalle mans up. Frazier for three. Simon, a big pull, and they'll start it again. Big offensive rebound by Simon. He's come of age, Jerry Simon. Just have a great game for him. Right in front of us, Overton goes for the loose ball. He cannot save it, and Pennsylvania will take possession. Oh, 
61-51 LaSalle, 6.02 to play. Penn needs a basket here badly. Hassan Dunklum back into the game, and Hassan Dunklum has not scored in this game, period. They get it into Sheaway. Good defense by Conlon to stop him. Duncan hits the loose ball for Whoa. Frazier, who's low bridge there by a diving Craig Conlon. I'll tell you what. Wow. Penn could even catch the ball there. That, that was, you know, they were in big trouble there. And Conlon gets the foul because he was going over aggressive. Well, that's the difference in the game. Ten points right now, 61-51. The foul was on Conlon. That is only his first and the sixth on LaSalle. So from here on in, we'll shoot him. Fresh 45 for the Quakers, but time of the essence. 5.35 to go. Puck running here in the second half. Simon, the big gun all game. Simmons blocks it, and we have a foul. As Hurd hit the deck. And I believe the foul's going to be on Simmons. Jerry Simon takes it all the way, and final Simmons gets him on the hand, but a good screen by Duncan, and Simon, Simon ran off his man. Good strong move by Jerry Simon. How about Hassan Duncan averaging 10 points a game, not coming up with anything tonight? So far, anyway. He just hasn't been in. He got in early foul trouble. They haven't been able to get him the ball. He's just not in the game right now. Simon with two to break the LaSalle scoring run and get the Quakers to within eight. Can't breathe too easy yet, Speedy Bar. Still have five and a half minutes to play. Simmons against Duncan. Could be a foul on Hassan as he moved right into the path of that Lionel. Lionel Simmons is so quick with the basketball. Hassan Duncan tried to take it away from the path. Couldn't get in there. Simmons can stop. Watch what he goes hard to the right. There's Hassan Duncan. Can't get there. Simmons can stop on a dime. And Duncan, with that weight, had his feet go out from under him and could not make the step back to get in front of Simmons and establish the position. Ray Marshall will now check in for Pennsylvania, replacing Duncan. And Tom Schneider just sort of putting his hands up into the air and kind of asking Hassan what happened. Meanwhile, the man who's been happening all night, Simmons, to the line. The one weakness in the game of Lionel Simmons is the foul shooting at 65%. But I'll accept that and take the rest for the time being. <laughs> Boy, what a guy. You take Lionel Simmons on your team, I guess. Oh. You and I could coach oh. Lionel Simmons. Speedy will hear that. Explorers and the man, up 10. Possessions growing increasingly critical for the Quakers. Frazier trying some breaking down of his man. Overton right on him. And we have a whistle there as the ball is got into Jose Tavares. And it looks as though Jack Hurd is going to be called for a foul. Since Tyrone Gilliams went down when he got hit by the, el the Aaron Elbow by Jack Hurd, he has not shown back. That's Hurd pen a little bit because Frazier has to handle the ball completely here. He must have, he got hit, so I guess they kept him out the rest of the game. I don't know if he's on the bench or not. He's all the way at the end of the bench next to the trainer as we see him there. Tavares, the junior swingman from the Bronx, had a monster offensive rebound and put back late in the Villanova game. I wonder if Gilliam didn't have a slight concussion or something in that shot. Can't even tell from here if he's even on the bench. Yeah, he's sitting at the very end of the bench next to the trainer on Penn's bench. That elbow in the face coming from Jack Hurd earlier in this half. 63-55, LaSalle eight with the ball. Penn's got to stop him on a couple of defensive possessions here, get the ball back to down eight. And they got to play man, even though this guy's around. Simmons goes in, has the ball blocked by Sheaway. I don't know what the answer is when Penn has to go man-to-man -man down eight. Who covers Lionel Simmons? Jerry Simon is having all types of problems. The man's just taller and stronger. Foul on Simon is number two. Of course, both teams well in the penalty. But Simmons 
who gets to the line twice as much as any other player unable to connect. So the deficit remains at eight. Still an opportunity for the Quakers, still four and a half to play. And the Quaker faithful rise on the side opposite us. The Explorer staying in the man. Frazier, double screen for three. Simmons, the big board, going over the top with Sheaway. It'll be a foul on Scott Sheaway. That was a very good move with the dribble of Walt Frazier. He pushed, he used both screens for the Quaker set up for him. Had a wide open three, makes him Tuesday night. The night's another night, he's not knocking it down, and that's what Tom Snyder's thinking. Good shot, just didn't knock it down. And a timeout is being called for by LaSalle. With 4.16 to play, LaSalle up by eight. We'll be back. What's going on? It's either the 4th of July or someone's trying to kill us. Now we will show her who is in charge of this galaxy. If you will not give me the combination to the air shield, Dr. Slotkin will give your daughter back her old nose. Only one man and his trusted companion can save planet Druidia from disaster. Okay, Eagle Five, coming in. I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Abandon ship, proceed to escape pod. What the hell's the matter with this sea, fella? Space Bowls, the movie. There is the score and the time remaining. And we are told that Tyrone Gilliams for Pennsylvania suffered a slight concussion. Well, I'll tell you what. Elbow from Jack Hurd. I should have gone to medical school. I could have called it right away, Mark. Look at him. He's dazed. And he'll be fine, but he is dazed. And that's definitely hurt the Penn Quakers' chances here because he was doing a good job at the guard spot. Dane Watts trying to check in, but they're not letting him, at least right now. And Simmons will uh, have to make at least one. Nope, he cannot come in. Can't come in after a timeout while the player is shooting us. I'm eavesdropping here on Jerry Donahue talking with Tom Schneider. That's Donahue well, right there. They were saying it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Can he go in after this shot? No. And I figured he could go in after the first make, but Donahue's interpretation is you can't once there's a timeout. you got to make the substitution right then and there. I've learned a long time ago. The referees know a lot more than me, and Jerry Donahue's one of the best in the country. I'm sure he's right. Now he can come in, no? They can't come in either now? Now he can come in as Simmons makes two. And Watts coming in for Sheaway. He's played very, very well for Pennsylvania. The winner of this game playing Long Beach State, a team that beat Drexel 92-84. They play the entire court. They love the up-tempo style. Should be a good game no matter who they play. Frazier, a pull for Marshall. Can't get it down. Might have gone out on Marshall, and it did. So those loose balls suddenly now going to LaSalle, the 10-point lead for the Explorers with four minutes to play. Well, they had two big shots. Walt Frazier had the three-point shot there. Again, he was short, not even close. Marshall came up with a strong rebound, but he can't get it down. Overton, and there's Hurd flying through the air and hitting the baseline hard, but he pops right back up. A resilient sort of fellow who's uh, performed pretty well tonight. Right there, Overton should have ran the offense a little bit. He came right mm -hmm. down, quick shot there, have a 10-point lead. Three, under four minutes, they got to take care of the basketball. Good screen by Marshall up high to spring Frazier loose, and as he penetrates into the interior, Simmons comes in front and steps in front, and will shoot it one and one. But Fourth, by the way, on Simmons. I'm being tough on Doug Overton. He's converting to a point guard spot, but he's done a great job. His speed, he's talking to him right now, and I'm sure he's saying, look at the clock, you gotta think, and there goes Overton looking up at the clock. Under four minutes, 10 point lead. The clock is what you wanna use. But that was one problem that Overton had earlier this year when LaSalle went up to Syracuse at the Big Apple. Doug just didn't have his point guard head on, and he was too much concentrating on his own shot instead of working the clock and delivering the ball to his teammates. 
He had since gotten out of that and really has been pretty much under control in this oh, game. And he's a good, good, he'll be a good point guard, plus he'll be able to score too. Mm -hmm. Four corners by LaSalle, spreading the floor, and Lionel's going to take it all the way. What a pass. Highland can't convert, but there it's knocked out of bounds by LaSalle as the Quakers previously unable to connect on the one and one. 3.20 to play, Quakers down 10 with the ball. And Simmons thought that he had deflected it and then deflected again by Sheaway, but they just saw Simmons touch it and it's out of bounds off the cell. Some offense defense now is coming into the game is Jose Taveras. He replaced Sheaway. Three minutes to go. Simon for three. Marshall the putback. I'll tell you, Ray, Schneider looking for a foul as well. He's not going to get it. Ray Marshall is real aggressive on the board to get to down the eight. Now we'll see now if LaSalle doesn't eat up some clock. They're in the four corners with Overton the man running the show between the four corners. It's Simmons showdown. Wow. He has shown me everything. The man is just taking the ball to the basket, driving by people. 28 for Lionel Simmons. Hurd hits the deck, no foul. Marshall and Hurd the board. So the jump shooter there is hitting the boards as well for LaSalle. And he will go to the line as Simon commits the foul out of frustration, his third personal. But of course, we're shooting them from here on in. Simmons just go right by Jerry Simon, stops right in 14 feet, knocks it down. That's out of a four-corner set where they don't mind the biggest guy on the floor handling the basketball for them. This man on the line, Jackie Hurd, only a freshman, has done a great job. Fourth game into the season, and he's just... Excuse me, the fifth game of the season, he struggled a little bit up in the carrier dome in front of 30,000. Now he's doing a real nice job. I'd struggle too in front of 30,000. <laughs> 30, 000, I know. Well, he misses, but then he gets the steal. Has Johnson with him. Hurd has 18 a game. That's five over his average, and that may have done it. Up 12 with two to play. Simmons knocks it out of bounds, and yes, it was last touch by Lionel. Pennsylvania needs to put it up quickly here. Watts. Simon has to do something. Sheaway can't draw it. And the air ball's picked off by Johnson. Jerry Simon hurt his ankle here. And he's not going to get up quickly. Tom Snyder looks on. He's in trouble, big trouble right now. 12 points, but his best player in this evening has just gone down with the, the ankle. Simon, the leading scorer in the game for Pennsylvania. The only real life they've had offensively all night. We'll see how it happened. There's Jerry Simon trying to go up for the rebound. He comes down. He must have come down somewhere now. There he sees pulling for the right ankle. Well, that may be it for the night now for Jerry Simon. And of course, you want him in the game late to try some three-point bombing, but uh, he's going to hit straight for the dressing room. I think he bruised his heel or something. Hopefully, it's not real serious, and he'll be back. Bill Helm, the freshman from Lewiston, Pennsylvania, comes into the game, replacing Simon. So now, not all, only are you down 12 with a minute 56 to go, but your best offensive player is nowhere near the floor. Over to it against Frazier. And they'll spread it out. And Penn just has to gamble a foul. And there's the foul as Dane Watts reaches in and fouls Lionel Simmons. Lionel Simmons going to the line. He's had a monster night. 28 points. He can add to it. He had 31 the other evening against the Hawks of St. Joseph. That's 29. He, the only thing Lionel hasn't done well is shoot the ball from the three throw line. And he's done that fairly well tonight. 
six of eight. What is that, Wharton grad? Uh, what percent? How about 75? All right. Shayway and Simmons saying, uh-uh, no more. With a minute and a half to go now, and LaSalle suddenly up 14. Frazier picks Overton's pocket. That's the kind of night it's been for the Penn Quakers, and especially Walt Frazier. Nothing's going down for him tonight. The game in microcosm right there, and that's going to do it. Minute 12 to go, clock running. So it's going to be LaSalle against Long Beach State tomorrow at 9 on Prism. Actually, here's a steal, however, by Pennsylvania. But it should be LaSalle and Long Beach. Frazier gets it. 9 o'clock start time. LaSalle has never won a first-round game in the Jostens, yet they have been in all four, counting tonight. They will win their first first-round game and experience their first championship game tomorrow night right here on Prism, and it should be quite a shootout with Long Beach. Conlon, a nice pass from her. They did such a good job. Penn was trying to foul them. They were moving the basketball so well, they got the easy layup. So LaSalle will gain revenge on Pennsylvania's 66-61 victory last year. And the same team, virtually anyway, I guess except for Legler and Tarr, that went 0-4 last year of the Big Five, now goes to 2-0. Couldn't a foul by Tavares, he'll go to the line. And tomorrow night against Long Beach State, we should be see a high-scoring game because I think LaSalle won't mind going up and down. They won't go up and down recklessly, but I think you should see a high 80, maybe even a 90 point by the winner. It will be a good game, I think, no matter what the tempo. But, and, and Long Beach State plays man-to-man. -man. Lionel Simmons get a good night's rest. You may set the record tomorrow night. Watts can't take advantage of the opportunity, and here comes LaSalle breaking down. Who's going to get it? Johnson. <laughs> well, it was a lot closer than this. Less than 15 minutes ago, and now the Explorers are going to run it up a bit. At the buzzer. A definitive dunkaroo by Lionel Simmons at the buzzer. And they run off Fistel High. The final score, 77 to 61. As Simmons with that dunk at the end ties the season high for 32. Speedy Morris's team now goes to four and one. They have won four straight. And they will appear tomorrow in the championship game for their first time in the four-year Justin's history as they take on Long Beach State. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this.